Hello and welcome to the evening news on TVC News Nigeria. I am Busolami Tunwashe. In the headlines, scores feared killed in Gombe Motor Park explosion. Police assure Nigerians of adequate security during the Christmas season deploys counter-terrorism unit nationwide. On the foreign scene, clashes erupt in Tunisia following SBC's declaration of victory in the country's presidential runoff election. And in sport, FIFA Executive Committee holds secret talks with Seb Blatter about his future as president of football's world governing body. Details shortly. Hello again. At least 20 people have died from a bomb explosion at the bus station in Gombe State. The attack occurred on Monday morning inside Doko Motor Park and it is speculated to be the handiwork of the Boko Haram sect. An official of the National Orientation Agency, Mantu Yakubu, says the bomb was planted near a park bus that was loading passengers. Meanwhile, Area Secretary of the Red Cross in Gombe State, Abubakar Yakub, says more than 20 body bags mobilized to evacuate corpses have already been used up. The search for more bodies is still ongoing. Now joining us via phone is the Gomba State Police our Public Relations Officer, Waj Tyre. Waj, thanks for joining us. Can you give us uh, more updates about the attack? Hello? Yes, please, can you give us more updates about the attack in Gombe? Yes. Uh, early hours of this morning. Yes. Uh, a, a car who was loading a passenger to Bajoga, a town in the part of Gombe, uh, was exploded. The police went into the area and corner of the area, gave assistance to the injured, and took them to the hospital after giving them some first aid. And um, evacuated the dead. Uh, 19 are confirmed dead, well, 25 are injured and admitted in different hospitals within the metropolis. The police are since taking control of the area and people are going about their normal business and patrol within the metropolis have been intensified and the police are going on with covert and covered and over uh, uh, surveillance within okay. the state. So uh, uh, has the police made any arrest? Uh, it will be too early for me to prevent the investigators. Uh, the investigation has just commenced. When they bring out their finding, we we'll let the press know in due future. Okay, so and what... So tell us more about the rescue effort. Hello? Tell us more about the rescue effort. The Red Cross just complained that um, they are probably in over their head in this. What, what, what can you do? What, what is the police doing to help the rescue effort? Yes. When the, when, when the you try to prevent the, 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 the rescuer from, doing, from performing their duties, the police went into the area and cut off the area, dispatched them and allowed both NEMA, Red Cross and other uh, the spirited uh, Nigerian to come into the rescue operation. As I talked to you, with the assistance of uh, various um, security agencies and government organizations, we are able to rescue some of those people that have been taken to the hospital and they are now receiving treatment. All right. Very well. Thank you very much for coming on yeah, Evening News you. on TVC News, Nigeria. Now, suspected members of the Boko Haram sect attacked the headquarters of Gadam local government area in Yoba State this Sunday. It was gathered that the attackers stormed the town at about 4.30 p.m. on Sunday through the eastern part of the town in vans and motorcycles. Eyewitnesses say they saw plums of smoke emanating from where the divisional police station, military camp, hospital and polytechnic are located. It was not a surprise attack for many residents as they had expected the insurgents to strike before now, prompting them to flee to nearby towns and villages. Meanwhile, more than 80 Boko Haram insurgents and two soldiers lost their lives when suspected members of the sect laid ambush along the troubled Meduguri-Dambao Road. 
Military officials say troops were ambushed while on their way to providing security cover for a transmission company staff who were conducting repair work in the area. The terrorists were armed with AK-47 rifles and rocket-propelled grenades. Now, Chief of Air Staff Air Marshal Adesola Amusu has called on all the personnel of the Nigerian Air Force to brace up for a long war against terror, saying that the counter-terrorism operations will continue. Amusu also insists that more works need to be done even in areas where terrorism had been defeated in form of mop-up operations as well as administrative, operational and tactical changes which will be introduced to the service. The security chief, however, revealed that by February next year, the Air Force would likely change its mission statement to reflect the imagined security realities. Meanwhile, the Nigerian Immigration Service has deployed more than 2,000 members of its special armed elite force to secure the national borders. Minister of Interior Abamoro says such patrol of the most vulnerable boundary areas of the north is key to improving security. Moro said the new border patrol unit will work to reduce the number of illegal immigrants who sneak into the country through unofficial roads. He added that the elite force is the last first batch of about 10,000 officers expected to be trained in unique border patrol techniques to effectively protect the nation's land gateways. And to politics now, former Senate leader Teslim Folari insists he remains the governorship candidate of the People's Democratic Party in Oyo State. Folari was responding to a letter from a federal high court sitting in Abuja urging the leadership of the PDP to restrain from recognizing any candidate who deferred from the one it ruled in favor of. Reacting Senator Folari brushed aside the document, which he says does not hold water. The embattled Oyo PDP governorship candidate also boasted that embittered co contenders who flare the PDP for other parties would soon return. There is nothing wrong uh, with the letter. What, what, nobody has told you what the corrective measures has been taken to neutralize that uh, action. There is nothing, absolutely nothing. INEC would be coming up with a revised list of uh, states that are okay and the ones we kill like, in the next uh, couple of days. We'll wait and see. The National Working Committee of the All Progressives Congress, that is the APC, has nullified the primary election to produce Festus Adeferai as the candidate for Odibo Iluloji Okibo Federal Constituency in Ondo State. The committee proclaimed the daughter of renowned Yoruba author, Chief D. O. Fagunwa Yejide Ogundukbe, as the duly elected candidate of the party. The party leadership upheld the recommendation of the National Appeal Committee to the fact that Gundikbe scored 189 votes to defeat Adefirai, who pulled 188 votes. Also, the committee upheld the election of Chief Tayo Alashu Adura as a candidate for Ondo Senatorial, Central Senatorial District. Now, ANEC has a role to play in preventing post-election violence. This was made known by Ebenezer Oyetaki in a guest on TVC News Nigeria's early morning program, TVC Breakfast. The most important factor in any election is the umpire. But INEC is not alone in this. In the processes of rigging election, INEC is not alone. But INEC, if they can stand their ground, for example, INEC have demonstrated lack of independency when the entire national commissioner and the commission took a decision to create additional polling beat, boots. Number two is the case of this PVC. This PVC is supposed to be a processional matters. Things that take off gradually and gravity graduate into perfection. But you see INEC modeling up the strategy, even two days ago or so, at neither state here, behind us. INEC is modeling the Senate last week directed its Committee on Independent National Electoral Commission to liaise with the electoral body to establish special polling units for the internally displaced persons who were victims of the ongoing insurgency in the Northeast. In a similar vein, a federal high court sitting in Bini Edo State ruled that prisoners should be allowed to vote in all national and, of course, local elections in Nigeria. With the 2015 general elections fast approaching, we ask the question, what is your take 
on the granting of right to vote to internally displaced persons and prisoners in the 2015 general elections. Join the conversation online by logging on to our Facebook pages at uh, www.facebook.com slash tvcng or www.facebook.com slash television continental and our Twitter handle at uh, TVC Nigeria or TVC underscore ENT. You can also access the questions on our website at www.tvcontinental. Summary of all comments will be read live during our 10 p.m. primetime bulletin later on today. Now joining us live to discuss issues pertaining to the All Progressives Congress is the chairman APC Lagos chapter, Henry Ajumali. Good to have you, Mr. Henry. So what is Thank your you very take? Much. Very well. Good what is your you. take on the selection of Yemi Oshibajo as Muhammad Buhari's running mate for the 2015 presidential election? I think it's one of the best things that ever happened to Nigeria because you are having two distinguished Nigerians who has not been corrupted in any way uh, since their public service. And then they are all upright people, trusted, and those who can carry out uh, one of the reforms and the changes that Nigeria has been yearning for for quite a while. And I believe that um, uh, Buhari has served this country diligently and uh, with all sincerity of purpose. And uh, Yemi Oshibajo, though he may not be known, but some of us who have been with him for some time knows the type of person he is. He, he, he has served in the government of Ashwa Jubala Metinubu distinguishedly for, for eight years. And then since his life, he, he is incorruptible. He's a religious man. Uh, to the core, and therefore, I believe, is one person that Nigeria can trust. Yeah, I was, I was going to ask a bit more about uh, Mr. Oshibajo. He's a professor. Now he's turned a politician. Do you think it will be a good fit, a good transition from him, for him? Yes, he's been in government for a while. Yes, he's been in a, um, he's been in government for a while, like like you rightly pointed out. But this transition will it be a smooth transition for him? Oh, yeah, I think so. He has always been in the party. Uh, he has been a member of the party from, from the inception. He was a member of ACN in those days. Although he may not be loud, people may not associate him with uh, our party, but he has been in this uh, since 1998 and has been contributing his own. Like I said, he may not have been loud, he may have faced his profession more than politics, but uh, he has not been divorced from politics from 1998. So it's only uh, logical that some of us know him very well, that he has not been tainted. He's a man who loves Nigeria very much. And we believe that with the combination of the two of them, corruption and progress can come into fall in this country. I believe strongly that they can deliver all the promises that they, are, they, they, they have made and they intend to make to Nigeria, depending on the manifesto and uh, the, the, uh, the manifesto of the party, which has outlined nine policies that can take Nigeria out of the wood in which we are now. Okay, let, let me just take you a little bit on the issue of corruption, which is um, uh, the scorecard or the, the trump card that um, the APC has. APC wants to stamp out corruption from the country. But given uh, the, 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 the fall in oil prices, there might not be too much money to even spend in Nigeria as it is. So, no, so if the issue of corruption is stamped out, as it were, what else? Or if corruption, let me, let me put it this way, if corruption is stamped out, will corruption be the panacea? Stamping out corruption, will it be the panacea to all the problems in Nigeria? As a matter of fact, we need it more now than ever before. When Nigerian fortune, as far as the oil is concerned, is now dwindling. And the few dollars that may be coming in now must be managed well. 
If not, Nigeria could be in trouble uh, financially, economically, and otherwise. And we may even have problems in terms of employment. When there is no development, there is no way you can employ people. And we know that it's not oil alone that Nigeria depends on. We can develop agriculture to where it used to be that is going to take Nigeria out of the wood. And I know that corruption must be tackled head on. If not, we will be in soup. We can probably go back to some other African countries where you will find Nigeria migrating when there is nothing here for them to do. But we must do everything. Every penny this time around counts. And we must be able to use it effectively to make employment possible, the, uh, uh, the health program, uh, the employment uh, opportunity for infrastructural development, and all that. Without this money, and without curtailing the small amount of money that we have now, then we'll be in trouble. Very if well. the corruption is not curtailed yes, now, certainly there can't be development because the money that we used to have, the free money we have from oil, will not be coming as usual. Okay. So Nigerians should go to bed with their, high, their two eyes short now since you're presenting uh, uh, two men who are ready to stamp out corruption. Yes, I, I think so. Very well. Thank you very much for yes. coming on. I TVC think we News are Nigeria. Hand, we are... Thank you, sir. Thank you for coming Thank on. You. I've been speaking with, uh, with the chairman of APC Lagos chapter, Mr. Henry Ajumale. I'm moving on hours still to come on the evening news. Do you know some people believe that in the months, a period when certain embark on a soul gathering mission, will tell you more about the needs and fears usually associated with the last four months of every year. This and more after this break. Stay with us. Welcome back. The Inspector General of Police, Suleiman Aba, has deployed various striking units of the force for watertight security for the Christmas and New Year celebrations. They comprise the Police Mobile Force, Special Protection Counterterrorism, Explosive Ordnance Department, Dog Section, and Mounted Troop Nationwide. According to a statement by the Force Public Relations Officer, and Monday in Abuja, the police air wing will carry out air surveillance patrols while the marine police will ensure a sustained patrol of all waterways. The IG has also directed all zonal assistant inspectors of police and command commissioners of police to put in place extended police visibility and patrols in order to protect the citizens during the Yuletide. The police advise operators of public facilities to be vigilant and ensure they properly screen all visitors or users of their facilities during the festive period. Typical of every Yuletide season, the air is often punctuated with a lot of excitement and preparations. It is a period of shopping, relaxation, and of course, merriment. Now, if you have the opportunity to drive around the city of Lagos at night, you would know that indeed Christmas is in the air, and Lagos has been made more beautiful, more colorful. TVC News, uh, Nigeria's Abimbola, Agwebi undertook a tour of the city of Lagos at night. When songs like this one have been sung, then you know what season we are in. Driving through the city of Lagos at night is such a beauty. There is extensive decoration of major streets and institutions across the city. Now every year in December, millions of persons across the world transform their rooms using attractive and expensive ornaments to celebrate Christmas. Now in Lagos, Nigeria, it is an annual tradition introduced by the Lagos State Government in the year 2008 to beautify its city ahead of Christmas. Now this is one of such Christmas decorations here in Palomo, Ikoi area of Lagos. And I can tell you, passers-by, road users cannot help but admire the sheer brilliance of this Christmas decoration. A visit to some corporate organizations shows that the season is here with their exterior and reception areas decorated. I also had the opportunity to visit a few worship centers in the city. 
But this is a Catholic church in Lagos, Nigeria, beautifully decorated ahead of the Christmas festival. There are other parts of the city decorated by some corporate organizations. This is Victoria Island and behind me is a lovely view of Christmas decorations. It's that time of the year when Christians all over the world come together to celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ. Now that is called Christmas. Now in the mood of the season, I cannot help but behold this beautiful and attractive Christmas decorations here in Victoria Island, which has continued to attract the attention of so many Negotians like me. It's beautiful. It feels um, international. It feels like, like Christmas, you know, the whole spirit of Christmas. It, it, it just excites you about the season. Taking pictures, I want to send people a piece of Lagos so they know that Lagos has such beauty and you know, um, we can take this season and, and take it to another standard, to another level. Which is exactly what, this, this, this is something I look forward to annually. I come here and I, I want to see what they've done every year. And then you take pictures. And I take pictures and I send them home. <laughs> and Lagos actually recognizes the season, you know, and definitely anybody who passes around, you know, seeing this would would really um, appreciate the fact that, you know, it's it's a time um, that, that it shows Lagos like a city that um, uh, brings people together, cultures together, you know, um, not just celebrating Christmas, you know, Lagos is a multicultural city. So when you have um, different religions and um, such an edifice put in Christmas, you know, it shows that um, uh, people live in religious harmony. In Nigerian markets, business activities have peaked, with thousands of people shopping for the festival. This year, according to a number of Nigerians, has been full of ups and downs with uncertainty surrounding the economy. They nevertheless remain thankful. Doorways of some shops may have attractive decorations meant to attract buyers, but the prices of the products for many are simply not attractive. The nation's economy will be passing through a difficult phase but most Nigerians believe the season is worth celebrating. Abimbola Abibi, TVC News Nigeria, Lagos. Also in Abuja, the city is already wearing the Christmas look in the run-up to the peak of the celebration, which is on December 25th. The sound of Christmas carols continue to reverberate among Christians, even in their worship centers. TVC News Nigeria, Sifion Isin reports. It's countdown to Christmas and the bells are beginning to ring, um, decoration bells. The streets in the Nigerian capital are wearing a new look. Christmas decorations are done almost everywhere in the metropolis. In the home, you'd find it on flower verses, in the lobby, on the walls, and on natural flowers outside the house. This roundabout wears an elaborate decoration, a constant reminder that Christmas is here. I did at home. I buy a Christmas tree. I do decoration in my house. So just for me to celebrate, I and my family. So we are celebrating Christmas. Dominant among the Christmas decorations are red, white and green. And they are all symbolic. This red and white stands for purity. The red, I think, is for the blood of Christ. And then the white is purity which is Christ, is this symbol of Jesus Christ that we are celebrating. I also sought to find out from Santa what the colors symbolize. You know, you know when they born Christ, you know, it's an, it, 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 it's, an, it's an spirit. The angel appears white. So red and white means love. Christ died. He came. They born. He died and came back again. Now we are celebrating Christmas off and on every year. As I see the decorations and the colors, I also want to experience more of the razzmatazz in the countdown to the D-Day. So I headed for the carols. At this worship center, classical Christian carols fill the air. The performers exhibit their dexterity in the delivery of the songs. Mm -hmm. 
After relishing the songs, I sought to find out the reason for Christmas. Christmas is significant because it's the birth of Christ. It's the coming of salvation, the beginning of salvation. Bible says that um, his name shall be called Emmanuel, for he shall be the savior of the world. At the end of the day, Christmas is a celebration you wouldn't want to miss. Sifon Asian, TVC News, Nigeria, Abuja. Now, the end of Ember month, fast approaching, also bringing the year to a close. The last four months of the year usually have attached to them several beliefs and questions which cause apprehension among Nigerians, making them tread carefully and adopt certain measures. In this report, TVC News correspondent Sophia Ogezi attempts to answer some of these questions. There are several myths about the last four months of the year, popularly called the Ember months. Many believe that September to December are the most dangerous months of the year that require special prayers and fasting to avert calamity, deaths, accidents and catastrophe. Why do people have such beliefs and fears? And do they really hold any water? We spoke to a psychologist who gave the likely reasons why people are unnecessarily apprehensive about the Ember months. People should be wary of uh, Christmas naturally because uh, it comes with it, uh, special pressure, you know, uh, extraordinary pressure. It comes with it um, because uh, somehow everything is winding down. And uh, it's also the period when so many people do a kind of stock taking. It's also the period when um, many family members do a kind of what you call mass return. It's a popular uh, holiday. You know, it's a season, you know, it's a whole season. And um, all mankind, not just Nigeria alone, look forward to it, regardless of your religious uh, persuasion or inclination. Ember period is also a time that witnesses high social, economic, and political activities across the country. Nigeria's Federal Road Management Agency says this period records more vehicular movement across the country. The agency